When might your thumb be too soft? Well, lots of times it's in a simple scale. A scale like this. I'll play a, a scale the way I would. Right, and there's that moment where your thumb plays and your fourth finger follows. And lots of times your thumb, perhaps your thumb is too loud. In which case you're trying a little too hard and we'll talk about that in a second. But sometimes your thumb is too soft. And your scale isn't even. Now, when my thumb is all scrunched up, my hand is turned so that my thumb has no room to move, then I can't get a good thumb sound. So for that cross under to work in a scale, you need to have room. Room for your thumb to play the way it normally would. So take a moment and put your fingers on the strings, any four strings will do, and just play your thumb by itself. Use your best technique and take a look at what your thumb does at how much it moves. Well, in a scale situation, and of course it may not be a scale, right? It may be a scale passage in a piece or even an arpeggio where you have to cross under. So those were, are some other situations. It's not just for playing scales, right? It's for playing your music. So look at how your thumb moves when it's just playing by itself. And now in the situation where your thumb is too soft, it needs to play that same way, with that same range of motion, that same position. Whatever works for it, when you're working it by itself, is how it needs to play in the situation. So, when you're doing a scale and you cross under with your fourth finger, you need to have that same amount of room, that same position of your thumb. So, what you have to watch when you're crossing under is that your leaving enough space for your thumb to play, right? We want room. <laughs> so don't place your fourth finger too high or your thumb will get all scrunched up. You can place your fourth finger low on the next string and if it's too low to play comfortably, as you place your other fingers, slide up just a little bit. Place your fourth finger low so your thumb has room and then slide up as you replace. This should keep your thumb at an equal volume. Another thing to watch though is as you cross under, don't twist your wrist or change the angle of your arm or the angle of your hand. Remember you've trained your thumb when it's playing by itself to play well in that specific hand position. So that's the position you need to maintain in a scale passage or an arpeggio passage where you have to cross under. You need to maintain that hand position. So as you go to cross under, make that motion as simple as you can, as uncomplicated as you can. Just put your fourth finger under and close your thumb. Don't twist your wrist trying to get it to happen. Don't dip your elbow or raise your elbow to a different height. Don't push your wrist in or out, twist your hand forward or back. Keep your hand position. Keep it nice and relaxed and just place your fourth finger under and close your thumb. That should keep your thumb with enough room to play. But the key here, as with the next thing that we're going to talk about, is to maintain that angle of your hand to maintain the hand position that allows your thumb to play well. So that should take care of a scale thing. And as you look at that, you know, there are plenty of exercises that you can do, right? Just put your fourth finger or your thumb rather on, a, on any string. You can put all four fingers on and then close two and three, four into your hand so that your thumb is on the strings by itself but in perfect playing position. Then cross under with your fourth finger. Make sure your hand doesn't move and just play your thumb. See if you can play your thumb softly. See if you can get a crescendo. See if you can get a diminuendo. See if you can keep your thumb relaxed. Oops, <laughs> my fourth finger didn't like that one. There you go. So 
all four fingers on, take two, three, four off so that your thumb is on the string by itself in perfect playing position, cross under with four, and then practice your thumb. You can also go back and forth between one and four, trying to match their volume. Now we talked about cross under with four and how that affects your thumb, but crossing over with your thumb if your scale is descending is the same idea. Place your only in reverse, right? So don't twist your hand when you replace your thumb. I'm playing one, two, three. My fourth finger's on the string. I want to replace my thumb. Move your hand and arm forward without changing the angle of your hand. Move it forward to replace your thumb. Replace your thumb fairly high so that you can put your other fingers on and your thumb will be able to play nicely. So the crossing over is usually quite a bit easier. Move your hand and arm forward, making sure to maintain that angle of your hand so that your thumb can play the way it's used to. Now, if your thumb is too loud, lots of times we just get more of an accent than we need. And sometimes, and we want it to be subtle. Right? The thumb isn't always the melody note. And even when it is, we don't necessarily need it to be very accented. Just very, right? That's a little bit too much. It just needs to have a beautiful tone. It's going to ring if it has that beautiful tone. So when your thumb is too loud, let's, fig let's learn how to balance it. What I would suggest, I just did this little arpeggio, four, three, two, one, up and down. So when you play your thumb, think about playing your thumb a little bit lighter than the other fingers. There are a lot of ways to practice balance here. Because that's what we're talking about. We're talking about balancing your thumb. So see if you can lighten up your thumb and make it match your fingers. But there are some more specific ways to work on this too. So this is a good thing to try. You can try using accents that take the accent away from your thumb, like long, short, long, short, long, short, long, short, long. That takes the accent away from your thumb. balance it. You can also practice with just intervals or chords. Say, here's a sixth. See if you can make those notes exactly match one and three. Then see if you can make your thumb louder, probably not a problem, just by how much pressure you put on the string. Then see if you can make your fingers equal again. Now see if you can make your third finger louder. Both of them quiet. Increase the dynamic. You can do this with any interval. You can do it with chords. Seeing if you can play even a four note chord and make any finger in that chord the loudest finger or the softest finger. This will help you learn to balance your thumb. One other important thing that I did touch on on that last podcast too is thinking about your thumb as pressing the string, releasing the sound from the string. You can give your thumb just a little bit of a, oh gosh, that's a, that's a hard callus on my finger, sorry. Um, you can give your thumb a little bit of a press. There you go. Just a little bit of a press and that will help release that sound from the string and give it just a little bit. Oop, there's my callus again. Needs to, needs to be filed just a little bit. There you go. So you can press it with a little bit of a, of a tiny twist of the wrist and that will help your thumb play with less, um, a less harsh accent at the beginning of the sound. Just press it, release that sound from the string, and that will help you 
get a better range of dynamic and a better tone from your thumb. But balancing that, balancing your thumb so that it's not always so loud is very simple. With those little rhythm drills that we went over, long, short, long, where the accents are on two and four, help you to, that will help you to do it. And then using those intervals or chords and and making sure that your thumb is just a little bit quieter than your other fingers. Now, let's talk about tension.